little spray plots down. Today we're going to spray the backyard plot. We call it the backyard plot. We'll spray this back pasture and a little patch over here that we already uh, bush hogged. And then we'll go over to the broom straw field and we'll spray that down. Uh, getting ready to plant corn and soybeans in these two uh, two areas right here. So first time doing that, it's be a new experience. First step is get it bush hogged, get it mowed down as low as you can. Next step, spray it all and kill it. And then we'll go from there. So we burned down the fields uh, the other day, just giving it about three or four days, starting to brown up a little bit. So in the meantime, got to put a lot of lime down. Um, so did a soil test last year, and last year we used liquid lime. This year we're going to do it right. We're going to use pelletized lime. Uh, got a seed spreader right here from Spintech. Just runs off of a your cigarette uh, outlet on the on the Polaris, or if you got a a four wheeler, you can uh, probably get the kit where it mounts to your battery so we'll see got about two tons of lime for three acres give or take so the main focus is going to be over in the broom straw this is the work part so you got to load all this up got it on the little makeshift trailer we made for the tractor gonna get all the lime over there got enough to do the broom straw field and then the backyard those two plots are going to be beans and corn, so got to get the pH really, really good. Um, never done beans or corn before, so it's a learning experience for me and Blake. Um, first thing is, is get the lime in the ground. Tested the seed spreader, motor runs, so probably have to do a little bit of finagling with it and figure out the distance and how much to throw out. But we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Get the lime in the ground, get her turned up. May 6th, got to get the fields turned up so that we can get the beans and corn in the ground. Got the back pasture all tore up and got a nice seed bed back there. Now I got to finish doing the backyard on the side of the pasture and then over to the broom straw. We already got about a quarter of it ripped up. The other night started pouring rain on us. So temperatures are going to be a little bit cool next week. Uh, it's a little bit cooler today. We had some days where it was like in the 90s and now all of a sudden the temperature just dropped off. So got a plant for temperature and, and weather not a date so my goal was to get it in the ground about mid-may Blake and I talked to talked about it mid-may is a good goal um, but it's supposed to be cool all next week and so by the end of next next weekend we'll check the weather again if the temperature is going to be up we got rain coming then we'll get the seed in the ground we'll run the colts packer over it and then hopefully just let mother nature take its course and hopefully get a good crop
All right, today's planting day. Uh, so you see right here, Joel went through and uh, rototilled all this up for the second time. So this is two passes with the, what's it called? The, rototiller. Yeah, rototiller. Uh, we put a ton of lime down in this plot about a month ago. We put a ton in the house plot too, as well. Uh, so it's been in the soil. It's kind of mixed in well. And then we came back two weeks ago and we sprayed, uh, killed all the grass and we started tilling. And that also helped get the lime down into the soil. So now we're gonna plant and we're gonna do uh, three quarters of an acre in corn, which will kind of give us our walking path to the blind you see. And then the rest of it will be like an L shape in beans. So, uh, we're going to try the broadcasting method this year just to see because, you know, we don't have the uh, a planter, like a corn planter or whatever, but that's why we wanted to till it up real nice and fine. And I mean, it's so airy. So we put that seed down and we run that culture packer over it, which is right here. And then uh, it should mash it down enough into the soil that we should get pretty good germination. So. We'll just see what happens. It'll be our first year trying corn and beans. And I just hope we have a decent turnout. <laughs> worst case, I mean, worst case, this is early. You know, we're in May. So worst case scenario, if we don't get great germination, we can always retail and plant like a fall food plot. So fingers crossed and we'll get to planting season so <clears throat> 20 pounds I, think I mean this is the main hunting area anyways yeah. I mean we just <laughs> built this badass box blind so we need to have the majority of the corn so over let's, here let's do 20 pounds for the three, 20 pounds. three quarters of an acre see how it turns yeah. out grab the can recording <laughs> oh, you ought to see this. <laughs> Farmer Joel. Got the corn out. Now it's time for Eagle Seed Soybeans. So did a lot of research and majority of people rave about Eagle Seed. So they, they supposedly put out a good product. It's our first year doing any soybeans. So the key is, is that every bag of Eagle Seed comes with an inoculate. And so this inoculate, you gotta pour the beans into a bucket and then you spread the inoculate in there and then you mix it all up. And that's what's gonna allow your uh, seeds to, ger to germinate. So to kind of give y'all a better aspect of what we're doing, we have this shade line. This whole section is going to be beans. It's going to be a big L plot of beans. So that shade line you see is going to be all beans right in front of the box blind. And then that far corner and then all the way up 
to the tractor over there is going to be beams as well and then from the box blonde this big rectangle right here you see is going to be all standing corn and that will also help as a barrier from the road and houses up that way and also for entry and exit into the in and out of the blonde <clears throat> I just made the first two passes with the bucket full. Blake only gets about a half bucket to work with. They wear you out, but man, that's we we tried to use the we tried to use the seeds the seed spreader the bag spreader, and it was just it's just not consistent at putting out the seed. It was like we were going through it way too quick. So we're just going to hand seed it and see how it goes. It's our first year i mean i have a seed spreader that goes on the polaris but i just was with as expensive as that stuff is i just didn't i mean it's not terribly expensive but we've already got enough money into the blind and you know the tractor and all the implements all that stuff costs money so you could literally do this without the tractor if you have a drag and all you gotta do is expose the dirt like i've seen guys they broadcast over stuff like this as long as there's dirt showing, they just go through with the drag and knock all that stuff down and spread the seed, drag over it again, get the dirt on top of it. But I wanted to be really sure, so I tilled this thing up multiple times to get a nice fluffy seed bed. Go over with the cult packer, should pack it all down. So Blake's out there getting it done. Chuck that seed, boy. Chuck it. <laughs> Looks like he's feeding the birds. We attached a uh, drag to the back of the cultivator or cultipacker. So we got the cultipacker packing it in and the drag to cover the dirt over top of the seed. And Farmer Joel. <laughs> All right, Blake's just finishing up the uh, soybeans here in the backyard. We got the broom straw all drug and cult packed. Went ahead and attached a drag behind the cult packer because it didn't seem like the corn was getting pushed down in the soil enough, and corn needs to be a couple inches deep. So, <clears throat> attached a drag to the back of the cult packer. And then as I was pushing down with the cult packer and mashing it down, I was dragging over top of it. So got a lot more seed to soil contact that way. And we'll uh, pray for rain. See, see what happens. Pray for rain. That's all you can do. It's supposed to rain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. 30, 40% chance. So hopefully we get a couple of inches of rain next week. And then uh, this stuff ought to take off. See what happens. All right, it's Memorial Day, 2021. I'll give y'all a quick update on the uh, food plots that we put in the, the beans and the corn. We planted these uh, <clears throat> about three weeks ago, and we got zero rain for like <laughs> three weeks. And then uh, two nights ago, we finally got a decent rain. So. I think we kind of screwed up because I, I checked the weather before we planted and Blake and I talked about it and was like, well, there's supposed to be like a 30% chance of rain the following week and we didn't get anything and we didn't get rain for like three weeks. So uh, the seeds were, we walked the plot and the seeds were on top of the soil, which we didn't really like that because it wasn't getting good seed soil contact. So went back through with the tiller 
and tilled those seeds down into the soil and even after not even getting any rain we, we had beans and corn popping up so after you know rain for two days I'm gonna go back out there and um, I'm gonna put up some scare does which is like a scarecrow but it's the scare does so I know it looks stupid but pie plates are shiny beer cans rattle and for basically no money I mean the, the pie plates were probably three or four dollars and it's some old clothes make a cross with a couple pieces of board wind blows knocks the beer cans and the pie plates together a little bit shiny so it probably won't keep uh, most of the deer out but it might work for a couple weeks just trying to get those plants to take off so go out here and show you how the sprouts are looking crop field and i have not been out here since the rain and i figured that the corn was going to be sporadic but this stuff is everywhere let's see let's check it out look at that we didn't have rain for three weeks corn 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 now some of this is weeds and grass but like that's 100 percent corn uh, that's weed there's corn and then all down through here are shoots of corn popping up all down through there that's corn 100% so I'm pretty pleased with the results even you know because for broadcasting you just never know what you're gonna get but soybeans real heavy planted right out in front of the blind I mean gosh they look great you know 15 20 yard chip shot all those little green shoots are soybeans and then behind the blind look at all that green soybeans eagle seed man they make a good product so all right we got jim and bob together with their jim bob we got old Jim Bob, the Jim Bob out here working. And then let's see what happens. Plot looks good though. Give you an update in a couple weeks before we put the video out. We'll do it all in one big shot just to show you what it looks like when it matures up. And hopefully, we just have nothing but soybean bushes all through here. Big standing corn, so. Forecast looks good. Three or four days of sun. Two or three days of rain, it's exactly what you want. Late May, early June, get them up. And then uh, we'll get to start naming these deer and get some pictures of these bucks that are coming out here. Hopefully we get a good pool of bucks this year. All right, so update over here in the broom straw field. It's looking really good. Those beans are really taking off and it's not terribly ate up with grass so I must have sprayed this one a little bit better those are all beans all the way out there Here you can see the deer have already been coming through eating the tops of them off which is anticipated but that's why I planted a lot of it and then the corn's coming up Corn start to come up pretty good, but it's been six weeks, and you would expect to see a little bit taller. There's a good section of it over there is coming up pretty good. But we'll see what happens. We'll get the fertilizer down and get another round of glyphosate on it. Kill the grass and then kill some deer. Joel and I, it's August 8th, we're heading out to the plot to see, see how everything's coming. It's been 11 weeks since we broadcast the beans, and we did a little bit of corn. Uh, yeah, we're just going to go check on it, see, see how they look, give you all an update. Look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a couple of stray ones that are up. really tall. So Joel put this, we got this uh, deer tape. Plot saver. Plot saver tape. And you can physically see the difference. This, this tape's probably two and a half feet tall right here. I mean, you can see I'm 6'1", and it comes up to mid-thigh, almost to my hip. And look out across there. That plot saver tape is definitely doing its job. Because you can see to the right over here, I mean, I know we got a lot of weeds coming up and stuff, but that's where all the deer are eating and chopping the tops off. But you can see inside the tape, I mean, it's thick. It's super thick. And we did the plot saver tape. So when hunting season comes in, here's our blind that we built over the off season. And all of that tape off area is gonna be all kill range. So we once the season comes in, we'll probably take down the plot saver tape and then it'll be like a field day all inside bow range. Hopefully they'll mow down all the other stuff and then once hunting season comes, they'll be in here like crazy. Right you can here. basically see down through here how much higher and lush the beans are on this side of the tape. Yeah, that stuff's thick in there. I know, bro. <laughs> it's waist high. I mean, it exceeded my expectations. Yeah. For broadcasting, I didn't expect us to get this much germination. Look at this stuff over here. Stay right there. I mean, that's waist high. Three feet, probably. Yeah, right at three feet tall. It's been 11 weeks. 11 weeks. I don't think it could have turned out any better, dude. I'm pretty happy with it. First year doing soybeans, and all we did was broadcast them out here with a bucket. So you can you can see right here where the tape's at. All in here is about three feet, two and a half. And then you come over here, and this stuff ain't been taped off. And you can see the difference. Knee high, a little over the knee, but that's what we want. We want the deer to feed on all this. And then when bow season comes in, we'll take down this tape and it'll be like a field day in there. So I think our plan is working. <laughs>